I'd like to welcome you to this memorial service where we honor the life of Janet Stewart. My name is Martin Content. I'm one of the pastors here at Willoughby Church. And I had like to offer a special word of welcome to those of you who are Janet family, uh, joining us live from South Africa. Uh, Janet has three children, Daphne, William, and her partner Amelia, and Jane and her partner John. Janet also had four grandchildren, Daniel, Justine, Jared, and Eric. So a special word of welcome to those of you who are joining us from so far away. Also a special welcome to Bonnie Costello and her family, Janet's cousin and dear friend who lives in Calgary, Alberta. And thank you to you who are members of our senior group here at church who have embraced Janet when she first started coming to our church. Friends, we have come to grieve the passing of Janet, a woman who loved to laugh and tell stories, and like all grandparents, loved to brag about her children and grandchildren. She had a colorful personality, strong opinions, and loved her independence, and she also had a very generous heart. So we've come to give thanks for her life and also grieve the dramatic change in her life the last few years when dementia set in and then finally her death on Sunday, February 25. To that end, will you join me in a word of prayer? Oh God, we thank you for the life of Janet Stewart, one of your children whose presence blessed many of us. Bless her family who have joined us via the live stream from the other side of the world. We remember Janet's vibrant personality as a senior in our midst, whose life became more and more diminished through the loss of memory. Thank you, God, for your promise to Janet and others in our midst who are also dealing with memory loss, that when we no longer know the faces of our family and friends, Yet we know that you know us, Lord. Thank you for the hope that you have given to all of us who believe in you, that when Janet took her last breath, she awoke from a long fog into a bright morning of clarity and saw you face to face. Lord, with the promises we celebrated this past Sunday, Easter Sunday, promises of life beyond the grave, we ask that you would comfort and bless us in this service. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm told that Janet loved to sing. <clears throat> she had a good voice in her younger years and uh, for many years was in the choir at First Alliance Church in Calgary. And I think was also in some of our pop-up choirs here at church. Will you join us if you're able to stand and we'll sing How Great Thou Art.
seated. I'd like to just share a couple of passages of scripture with you. In John 14, 1 through 6, we read these words that Jesus spoke. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may be where I am. You know the place to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then from Romans chapter 8, powerful words that have comforted many Christians throughout their lives. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It's God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. At this time, um, just a, a word of uh, explanation perhaps, um, in the program that you got, uh, this order of service, there's a little blue sheet here You've had a chance to read it. These are words that Janet herself wrote, uh, I believe, uh, just as she was leaving Rhodesia. Uh, and so uh, Gail inserted those in the program that her daughter made for us. And uh, you can read those words uh, either now or later. And uh, also in this folder are some pictures that uh, we didn't have access to so we couldn't put them on the overhead, but pictures of Janet's family, her children and grandchildren in South Africa. And um, at this time, I'd like to invite Trudy to just say a couple of words. Trudy was part of a group that, uh, I think the Joels were part of that, living in the same complex. And uh, so they became good friends. I and Alice Joel first met Janet when she met a moved into Queen Anne Green, our complex. She had just had surgery and she needed help. Jan she was a kind, caring person, and Alice and I became good friends with her. Janet had many, many talents, and she used them to help others. She was my best friend, and she helped everyone. She was kind and tender-hearted, and she's now home with Jesus. Thank you, Trudy. I'd like to read Psalm 23 with you. 
well-known words from Scripture, often read at memorial services. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Dear family and friends of Janet, I will be the first to admit here this morning that I did not know Janet all that well. I remember talking to her after some services when we'd walk out together or in the fellowship hall. Uh, and I only visited her a few times in the last year. And by this time, she was deep into dementia and had lost touch with reality and was in full-time care at the Langley, Fort Langley Care Center. So I'm grateful this morning that her daughter Jane and also her cousin Bonnie provided me with some background information that helped me gain some perspective and context of who Janet was. Janet was born on April 18, 1940 in Salisbury, South Rhodesia, now known as Zimbabwe, where she lived in the early years of her life. She was married and had three children, Daphne, William, and Jane. And those of us who knew Janet would often hear her tell stories about her children and grandchildren, Daniel, Justine, Jared, and Aaron in South Africa. They were her pride and joy. Janet worked outside the home and was employed in the insurance industry for most of her married life. The family immigrated to Rod from Rhodesia to Scotland, and then they went to Canada and settled in Edmonton, where Janet was involved in, with banking. Then, in the early 80s, when the economy in Canada and perhaps around the world tanked and interest rates were sky high, Janet and her family moved back to South Africa. It was in those years that she and her spouse got divorced. Janet was deeply attached and devoted to her mother who had lived in Calgary. That's why they came to Canada in the first place. So Janet moved again from South Africa and came back to Canada to look after her mother who was in declining health. This decision to immigrate once more back to Canada and leave her family in South Africa was difficult for Janet. It involved great sacrifice for her, but also for her children and grandchildren that she left behind. She sacrificed the joy of being close to children and grandchildren and being able to interact with them on a regular basis. And her decision to move also made it difficult for familial relationships to grow and to flourish when there was such a great distance. Janet cared for her mother many years in her mom's home in Calgary, and then later when that arrangement didn't work so well anymore, she provided the best care she could find for her mother in Calgary in a care home. Janet never missed a day in visiting her mother there till the day she died. Her mother was an avid needlepoint of aficionado, and Janet donated one of her mother's pieces to our church, Michelangelo's la uh, Last Supper painting, which is done in Middle Point and hangs in the prayer room at the back of our church. After her mother died, Janet moved to British Columbia, to Langley, and as you just heard, into that townhouse complex and became a neighbor to Trudy and Henry Schafsma and others in our church. 
The Shafsma became good friends to Janet, inviting her to come to our church, helping her with some of the business and administrative matters that needed attention, and simply sharing life together as good neighbors. So I want to just say on behalf of all of us at church, Henry and Trudy, and also Gail, uh, we want to thank you for showing Christ-like love to Janet in many different ways over the years. Those of us who did know Janet knew her to be a strong-willed person, a funny, sometimes flamboyant personality who loved people, who was very generous, compassionate, and was a great storyteller. Sadly, in the last years of her life, as dementia set in, Janet's stories became very creative, imaginative, and very much out of touch with reality. But I think it's fair to say that her basic personality remained intact. Janet was also a person of strong faith. And the last time I visited with her, I read this Psalm 23 with her. The familiarity of those words seemed to reach her in the moment, and I want to stress moment. Uh, but it's for that reason that I decided to base my meditation this morning on that psalm. It's probably one of the most well-loved psalms in the entire Bible. As you know, it was composed by David, a beloved king of Israel. And while he was a young man caring for his father's sheep in the Judean countryside, David realized as he was caring for those sheep, it occurred to him that God was also his shepherd. He realized that just as he cared for his sheep, God in a much more complete and full way cared and provided for him. And so that shepherd theme, that motif in the Old Testament starts here in Psalm 23, but it gets replayed over and over again in scripture in ever richer variations. Jesus himself picked up on that theme of good shepherd when he told that powerful parable of a shepherd who counted his sheep and discovered that one was lost. So he left the 99 sheep behind looking for the one who was missing. And so in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, Jesus declares, I am the good shepherd. <clears throat> Janet knew God as her good shepherd. Her faith in God was based on the care that she sensed God provided for her. And perhaps it also informed some of the care that she lavished on her mother. As we just heard, Janet was generous and always willing to give and help anyone in need. On February the 25th, the good shepherd called Janet home. And in the last verse of Psalm 23, which reads like this, Surely your goodness and love will follow me, or another word for that is, will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Friends, this psalm provides very much great comfort for us, knowing that God, our shepherd, pursues us till the end of our days, with his goodness and his love. He sets us free from sin and failures and for, from some of the brokenness that we cause in our lives. And uh, he restores us. He forgives us. He renews our minds and bodies with a new resurrected body, something that we celebrated this past Sunday, Easter Sunday. For Christians, Easter and the belief that Christ conquered death provides us with the comfort of knowing that this physical death, which we grieve this morning in Janet's death, can lead us to eternal life, to be forever in the presence of our God. And for those of us who remain behind, who need to go on living, what a wonderful comfort to know that God, the God of heaven and earth, loves us so much that he continues to pursue us with his love and mercy. Like King David, the author of Psalm 23, who went through times of great victory and celebration and feeling like he was on the top of his game, and also through times of dark defeat and 
failure and brokenness and humiliation, even with those two extremes in life that we can all relate to in our own context, we're reminded that in all of that, we are never beyond God's love and care and compassion. And when our days on earth end like they did for Janet, we know that his love continues with us throughout all eternity. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's pray together. God, our eternal and gracious Father in heaven, Lord of life and death, you made us in your image and hold us in your care. We thank you for the life of Janet and the faith that she had in you. Thank you for her kindness, her care and compassion, for her generosity. Jesus, you are our good shepherd and we thank you that you have overcome death through your resurrection. You know our sorrow and sadness and tears because you're intimately acquainted with all the struggles we go through in this life, including the pain of death. I pray your blessing in a special way on Janet's family far away. Surround them with your good care as they grieve and process the death of their mother, mother-in-law, and grandmother, doing so from a distance. Will you comfort them and remind all of us of your unfailing love that pursues all of us in every circumstance of our lives. We pray this in the strong name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sing Amazing Grace.
Tamara, our church administrator, has put together uh, some slides, uh, memories of when Janet was part of our seniors group here. And uh, you notice on your program that we were going to sing uh, that song, I bowed on my knees and cried holy. Um, when we, Ted and I, listened and others uh, to this song, we realized that this is not a song that our congregation knows, and uh, it's also not really a, a song. It's a beautiful song, but it's not a song that is good for congregational singing. So Tamara has used th that song as part of the slideshow. Enjoy. Of a city called glory, so bright and so fair. When I entered the gates, I cried, Holy. The angels all met me there. They carried me from mansion to mansion. Then I said, I want to see Jesus, the one who died for all. Then I bow on my knees and cried. Thank you, Tamara. I invite you to stand for God's parting blessing, and then we'll sing the doxology, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. And after that, uh, we'd love it if you could all join us. There's plenty of lunch and uh, time of refreshment and fellowship. Friends, uh, please stand for the benediction. <clears throat> Friends, go in peace, and may the God of peace, who through the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever, and all God's people said, Amen. <clears throat>